there's a pub question I think that was asked before who's the man who had a gun pointed at him at three <laughs> European Cup finals what would the answer be to that one that's me <laughs> um, that was a trivia question on talk sport to start with um, it was you know if you told me that was going to happen during my career at Liverpool, I would have said you were crackers as well. There was just a series of misunderstandings and coincidences of Paris 1981. Uh, the club flew me over to Paris, but I was told that when I checked into my hotel, somebody from the French FA would look after me. And um, what the French FA did was they, uh, they got a pass for me to get in the ground but they posted it to the hotel. So it turned up in my hotel the morning after the game. So on the night of the game, I had to talk my way past security. And the, um, the first outer line of security was the riot police. And uh, there was one particular uh, member of the CRS who was actually standing at the end of the, this alleyway where I had to go down to get to the stadium. And uh, I was trying to persuade him I was supposed to be in there. And eventually he got fed up, cocked his rifle, and I had a bayonet, you know, halfway up my nose. So I just left him to it. And then in the end, I got, you know, managed to dodge around the back of him and a few other guys and, and talked me way past the gendarmes. But three days later, uh, three years later, rather, when we were in Rome, um, Peter Robinson told me up and said, UEFA want you to be in Rome, but after the trouble you had in Paris, what we're going to do, we're going to take you in on the team coach. So you come up to the team hotel in the afternoon of the game, you go with us. And uh, that's what we did. That was fantastic being on the team coach, going into the European Cup final. And all the way in, uh, into the, underneath the stand, the team all dumped their stuff in the dressing room, went off to look at the pitch. Uh, and I said, good luck, lads. And I turned round and a UEFA official who'd been on the coach with us uh, collared me. He said, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going up on the TV gantry. He said, have you got a pass? I said, well, no, I haven't got a pass. That's why I was on this coach. Because three years ago, your lot messed up my pass. So this time they put me on the team coach, so I don't need a pass. And he said, okay, hang on a minute. And he disappeared. I thought he'd just gone to check my story. But when he came back, he had one of the carabinieri with him. There was a gun pointed in my direction. I got out of there. Um, luckily, I bumped into a, an Irish friend of mine, Jim Kennefick, who used to look after the sponsors in those days. And he said, why are you out here? So I told him the story. And he said, here, I'll tell you what, give me your ticket and you take this. And he had a lapel badge which said, access all areas, UEFA. So I got back in again and did what I had to do. That night laid the foundation, I'm assuming, for one of the worst experiences you ever had in life the following year in high school. Absolutely. <laughs> again, I was told that the you know, UEFA wanted me there. I flew over to Brussels on the day. I didn't stay overnight. Met up with the team. We drove into the uh, stadium. But the, as soon as you get out of the coach, you think this is all wrong because um, the distance from the coach to the doors to the players' entrance was about, I don't know, best part of 100 yards. There were no security. And, I mean, there were a few, couple of rows of people watching the players go in. But as it happened, they all they were all quite friendly. But if there'd been somebody with, you know, uh, ideas in his brain to cause trouble, he, he would have had no problem there at all. You get inside the stadium, it's falling to bits. It was just so crazy. And then I'm, I'm watching the Italian fans, you know, they were taking bricks out of the wall and they were dismantling the, the crush barriers. And all they wanted to do was cause trouble. But then obviously, later on, there was trouble. Um, and we were getting messages in the little room where I was that they'd found somebody dead under the rubble. And then it ended to five people. And before too long, we were told that 39 people had been crushed. 
And uh, eventually somebody from UEFA came to me to say what they decided. They, it was probably quite sensible to actually play the game um, because otherwise there would have been 48,000 people on the, out on the streets, out of control. But then he said to me, if anybody else comes on the pitch, the referee will abandon the game. And I said, you can't do that. I said, if somebody scores, the other lot will be on the pitch trying to get the game abandoned. And the UEFA delegate, UEFA delegate got really angry. And he said, just do as you're told. And I said, no, we've already had a bloodbath down there. I don't want to be part of another one. And then he, he did the same as the guy in Rome. He you know, turned around, beckons this policeman. So I've got another gun pointing at me. Then he says, do as you're told. And I said, no. I was thinking, I don't know what sort of trouble I'm going to be in now, but I'm, I just can't do that. And then luckily Phil Neal turned up and he laid into this guy and the, the whole thing sort of died away. And uh, you know, we got through the game. Should have had a penalty near the end, but I, thank God we didn't get it. And uh, I just made my escape.